After more than 50 days, demonstrators continue to protest near the federal building in downtown Portland. As CNN reported earlier in the day, officials erected reinforced steel fencing around the federal building, which has been repeatedly vandalised in prior days. That fence has been pretty much dismantled. CNN's Josh Campbell is joining us now uh, from Portland. Uh, yeah, the fence, uh, I saw you reporting on it earlier, didn't last long, did it? What, what's the atmosphere there in Portland? Yeah, it's exactly right. And let me show you what this fence has turned into. There was a metal structure that was surrounding this federal building, Michael. As we move off to the end, you can see that protesters have dismantled that fencing. It took them about 20 minutes to uh, get that down, and they have now moved pieces of that metal fencing against some of the doors. Reason being is because inside this building right now are heavily armed tactical officers. We just got a sense of how far those officers are willing to go. Uh, just a little while ago, they came out here in full force, launching crowd dispersants, launching tear gas. You can see probably the water in my eyes still uh, to try to get this crowd out. Now, uh, the crowd did move back blocks away, but it only uh, inflamed the situation here where now these protesters, uh, if they were frustrated to begin with, they are now very angry and people have moved in. I can now tell you just a bit of breaking news we got just moments ago. The Portland police have now declared this a riot. And let me just... Here come the officers out a second time, and you can see what happens when this uh, takes place is you'll see uh, some of the crowds start to move back. Now, that was a flashbang. We expect that there'll be some dispersants here. But again, the Portland police have now determined that this is a riot. This is an unlawful gathering uh, that you see over there in front of the federal building. Now, this is, a, again, stemmed, as you mentioned, over 50 days of protests uh, here in this area, this following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis at the hands of police officers. Uh, but again, protesters here in this city of Portland have continued here night after night. I'll tell you one other thing that as we wait to see what the officers are about to do after we just heard that flashbang is it's very much night and day here, a tale of two protests. During the day, there are largely peaceful protesters that gather in this area. Another flashbang here coming from the federal building. Uh, Jordan, it looks like it's going to be IRS building over here. So um, what actually uh, was taking place uh, again with these protests is uh, people would gather in the daytime very peacefully and then in the evening it's very much a different crowd that comes out here. Uh, some of it turned very violent and people actually trying to destroy this building. Again, this will go on and on. Uh, right. We're just waiting to see what police will do next, whether that yeah. will include more crowd dispersants, more tear gas. They're clearly impatient. Michael. Yeah, yeah, they're trying to keep him back from that building. It, I mean, uh, declaring it a riot, I mean, it doesn't look like much of a riot at the moment as, as far as riots go. And of course, this comes at a time when, when protesters are also angry because uh, of the actions of uh, some federal law enforcement, uh, as opposed to local law enforcement and the, these sorts of what they call snatch squads driving around the streets. And I know you've been looking into that as well. That's obviously what, what the protesters are saying uh, on Twitter and to me is that that has made things worse. Yeah, that's right, Michael. That has fueled uh, the, the fire here, so to speak. And what that uh, actually resulted from is this viral video showing these heavily armed tactical officers come and arrest a man. They brought him to an unmarked vehicle uh, where he was whisked away. And, you know, what was so strange here is that you had United States senators saying that this is not something that happens in the United States of America. Uh, elected officials actually calling that authoritarian, these so-called snatch squads. Now, we did find out from law enforcement, they said that the person that was arrested is someone who they wanted to question uh, for a possible involvement in criminal activity. But it's the manner of what took place, Michael. Again, uh, grabbing this person in the middle of the night, putting him in an unmarked vehicle and whisking him away. We still don't know what happened to him. I've reached out to the agency uh, that was responsible for that arrest. They're not responding to us about what happened to this man. Again, continuing to fuel these uh, narratives of authoritarianism here on the streets of the United States of America. And as a result, you see some of these protests. People here clearly very, very angry. Michael. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and state and local, local officials even taking legal action to try to remove the federal agents uh, in the state. Um, it, it's called a riot there. Hopefully it doesn't develop into a real one. Um, uh, we'll check in with you later. Josh, good to have you there on the spot. Josh Campbell for us. And we Thanks. will take a short break. I want to turn to a different story now. Police in Portland, Oregon, have deployed tear gas as protesters continue to gather. The demonstrators have been calling out racial inequality and police brutality for more than 50 days now. 
As CNN reported earlier, officials put up reinforced steel fencing around the federal building that has been repeatedly vandalized. That fence has now been dismantled. CNN's Josh Campbell is in Portland Forest. He's been watching the developments there tonight. What is the very latest, Josh? Yeah, Natalie, well, let me show you what that fencing looks like now. You see the pieces here uh, on the ground. Uh, earlier, this whole area was surrounded by this metal fencing, and that was brought in because you see a lot of the graffiti uh, and the defacing of federal property on the other side. Uh, that is something that authorities tried to stop by erecting this bar uh, barrier out here. I can tell you it took some of these protesters about 20 minutes to defeat that fence, to get it down, and now we can see them in and around this area. Uh, we have seen protesters that have continued to build the numbers that have been coming out. As you mentioned, police did come out of this building. We're kind of on high alert right now. It could happen at any time. Inside this federal building are several heavily armed federal agents. We already know that they're willing to come out and use crowd dispersants. We were tear gassed ourselves as we were out here in and among this crowd. They were using dispersants to try to push people back. And I can tell you that one thing it did do in the short term was uh, they achieved their goal in getting one away from this building. But it, I can tell you it also uh, really agitated this group. So they were frustrated before. They're now very angry. Protesters out here, it continues to build. And again, as you mentioned, this has been going on for over 50 days. People who are here demanding racial justice, demanding uh, that in their view that the uh, excessive use of force by police stop. And right now here in Portland, there continues to be this showdown between federal agents. President Trump has, uh, has ordered a number of federal officers here into the city, agents from the Homeland Department of Homeland Security. Local officials want the feds to leave. Protesters want the feds to leave. President Trump says that they are staying. As long as there's uh, this type of vandalism that we see, they're going to have uh, federal agents here. But again, it's just a, a cycle where the more officers from the federal side are here, the more protesters are angry, and these protests continue night after night. Right. It's, it's a shame that there can't be any dialogue, something to diffuse this other than what you're seeing and what people are experiencing there. Thank you so much, Josh Campbell, bringing us the latest on that situation. We know you'll continue to follow it.